Hawkins, a member of the ministry team at Midford and Hebron Churches. I'm going to light a candle to remind us that Jesus is here. Jesus said, when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And we'll have our opening prayer. Spirit of the living God, we thirst for your presence. Our souls are restless till they find their rest in you. Spirit of the living God, we come to celebrate that your life is present deep within us and at the heart of all creation. Spirit of the living God, you bring us wholeness new sight to our eyes, new music to our ears, new hope to our hearts. Spirit of the living God, forgive us when we forget your gift of love, made known to us in Jesus Christ, and this morning draw us into your presence. Amen. The reading this morning is from St John. Chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's reading we hear how Jesus heads from Galilee and finds Philip who becomes his follower. Philip then tells Nathaniel who at first is cynical but then believes and becomes a disciple too. So this passage is all about becoming a follower and if we look carefully at what is written maybe we will find what it takes to be a Christian and to follow Christ. I've brought along some visual aids which have helped me remember some of the points. They may help you too. The first object is a magnifying glass. There it is. Magnifying glasses are generally used 
to look closely, to search, to find. Did anyone notice at the beginning of the reading in verse 43, it says, Jesus found Philip. Human beings are very keen on finding things. We like to find things out, whether it's a new technology or what's going on at number 12 down the street. We are curious animals. On a spiritual level, if we go into any bookshops, there are shelves devoted to self-help. We read of people finding themselves, finding their inner child, finding meaning, finding purpose. Some of these books assure us that when we find these things, we will know true happiness, true fulfilment. Yet Philip, one amongst thousands, a mere speck in the world, did not find, but was found. And as he was found, he was fulfilled. Now I suspect Jesus didn't have a magnifying glass, but isn't it reassuring that God seeks us out? We are not in charge of things, including our faith. He is. Can you remember the story of the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit? They hid from God, but he sought them out. He found them, just as Jesus found Philip. God has chosen us. It's not the other way around. Paul reminds of, us of this in Ephesians 1 verse 4. It's quite humbling, isn't it? And puts us soundly in our places, but reassuring at the same time. To be found by a God who takes the initiative and who loved us first. That's why he created us. Now, once Philip was found, Jesus issued one simple command, which was, follow me. Very direct, very assertive, and leaving Philip in no doubt that Jesus had to be number one in his life. And what did Philip do? Well, this brings me to my second object, which is rather large. Yes, it's a travel bag. Wouldn't Philip need something to follow Jesus? Well, this bag is completely empty. Philip didn't need anything. He was fine just as he was. He didn't need to brush up on anything. His accent, his knowledge, his presentation skills, his appearance. No, he was loved for being himself. I suppose that's reassuring too. We don't have to be perfect. We can be who we are. It also reminds me that when we follow Jesus, we can't keep anything back. We can't hang on to stuff. We can't make gods of other things like money or possessions or family or friends or clothes or cars. It's all or nothing. As I read somewhere recently, he is Lord of all or not at all. So Philip followed. So what did he do next? Well, the next object is a mine and should be a clue. It's supposed to be a telephone. Now, when something is important, people generally tell someone else. Nowadays, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and so on are buzzing with news. And that is what Philip did. He wanted to tell to share the good news. And his first stop was Nathaniel. But did you notice in the reading in verse 45, Philip says, we have found Jesus. 
a typical human being taking all the credit. We know that Jesus found him. But isn't it comforting to know that evangelising, telling others about Jesus, doesn't mean that our theology has to be perfect, has to be spot on. Philip's theology certainly wasn't, and he must have been disheartened when his brother Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? Now, just like Philip, we are called to spread the good news, to phone a friend, if you like. And yes, like Philip, we might get the theology wrong, and we might be met with jeering, with laughter, with cynicism, just as Philip was. We can easily imagine the comments we might get today when we talk about Jesus. I've heard things like, well, Jesus spoils Christmas, doesn't he? And here are the Christians with their invisible friend. Not kind, but we are called to brave these comments, just as Philip did. He didn't get into any nasty arguments. He kept what he said simple and to the point. Come and see, Philip said to Nathaniel. Come and see. This is an invitation. No pressure. Just come and see for yourself. Now, do we ask people to come and see? And if they do come and see, what will they find at Mitford and Hebron? Hopefully a warm welcome, a sense of God, changing people's lives? Will they have an experience of worship that gives them access to God? Will they go away with a sense of excitement that something is happening here? Is Jesus at the centre of everything that is said and done? Anyway, Nathaniel is met with warmth from Jesus who praises him who knows him already as a devout man without deceit. My next object is an open book. And I think Nathaniel could be described as an open book. A see what you get sort of man. Plain talking, outspoken, a man who would admit his doubts. A good man who will want answers to the questions he will certainly want to ask. Maybe as Christians we are called to face our doubts, to ask questions, to talk to each other as we study scripture and to support each other as we learn and as we falter. In this way our relationship with God will be enriched just as Nathaniel's was when he was called to a relationship with Jesus, a relationship that will enhance the relationship he already has with God. And as an open book, he is inviting Jesus to write on his life pages. Notice the pages in my book are blank, open to what God has in store for him. Yes, Nathaniel is open to Christ, whose hand has always been on his life. How do we know this? Well, Jesus says that he saw Nathaniel sitting under a fig tree. A fig tree is sometimes used in scripture as a symbol of the peace and blessings of God. In Solomon's time, for example, people were described as sheltering under their own fig trees in peace and prosperity. Jesus then perceives on a spiritual level the peace and blessings of God in Nathaniel's life. Jesus' hand was in this life even before he met Nathaniel. Jesus had sought him out and found him. Now, I couldn't bring a fig tree into my living room, but this plant here may remind us of the main points of the sermon. 
A healthy plant has good roots, provides food and shade. All the things that follow in Jesus gives us a firm foundation, spiritual feeding and protection from harm. And this is what Jesus is referring to when he talks about Nathaniel, who has known the peace and blessing of God, but is being called into a deeper place of peace and blessing through a relationship with him. And if we are made in God's image, we are like this plant too. We are called to be dependent, to trust and put our roots and shoots into all types of soils and prevail in all kinds of weather. And despite every type of setback and frost and storm and pruning, we will bear fruit, planting seeds just as Philip did as he followed Jesus and told Nathaniel to come and see. Let us pray. Seek me out, Lord. Help me to follow you. Help me to make you number one in my life. Write on my pages as I open my life book to you. Be with me as I tell others the good news. Give me the right words to say, Lord. Teach me through your word. Encourage me and support me through my church family. Give me the peace and blessings that knowing you brings. Amen. Oh, I'm
God an experience that was special in some way, aware of how God's love was revealed to us. We bring to God someone we have remembered this morning and for whom we want to pray. We bring to God a troubled situation in our world today. We bring to God our hopes for the coming week and our awareness of God's guiding spirit. We bring ourselves and one another to God aware of his endless love and giving and asking that we might grow in generosity in warmth of affection and in commitment to his ways bringing all to god we pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our blessing. In his love he clothes us, enfolds and embraces us. That tender love completely surrounds us, never to leave us. May the Spirit of God surrounds us and those we love, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>